In this quick video, I will walk you through three different ways to animate your charts in PowerPoint. This is going to keep your audience engaged and tuned into the data story you are presenting. Animation is a really powerful technique to use when you're presenting live or even virtually to emphasize the points in your story and ensure that the audience is focusing their attention where you want it. It's a good way to keep your audience engaged when you're presenting. By only showing one or a few elements at a time, you keep them tuned in so they don't miss what's coming next. Animations can also allow the audience to focus more on what you are saying rather than trying to make sense of the visual. For example, if you start by showing a graph with the X and Y axis without any data, you can set up the chart and provide some background before you present the entire visual. And as you build up your chart, the audience is gonna be following along and they're gonna be more likely to understand what you are aiming to communicate. So there are at least three different ways you can do animations, probably more than that, but today I'm just gonna cover the three that are listed here. We're gonna start out talking about PowerPoint's native animation capabilities. And then from there, we'll talk about two more, what I'd call brute force techniques. One where we use multiple charts on separate slides and another where we use a single chart, but with white text boxes to block out anything we don't wanna share. So each of these approaches has pros and cons and we'll cover that as we go through. So depending on the situation that you find yourself in, you may decide to go with one approach over the other or perhaps a combination of them. Let's now move on to an example that we'll use to explain each of these different animation approaches. This is a chart taken from the Storytelling with Data Let's Practice book. You can find it under exercise 7.5. I'll also link to this in the show notes below so you'll have it for reference later. As you can see, there are a lot of components to this slide. This is entirely too much detail for sharing all at once in a live presentation. When we attempt to share busy visuals like this in our presentations, people will be scanning it and possibly tune out. Or worse, they might be struggling to make sense of it. In fact, you may very well be doing this right now. You may be tempted to read this slide instead of listening to what I'm saying. So to reduce the likelihood of this scenario, Let's consider an animated example instead. Hi folks, thanks for joining our meeting today. We're going to be discussing the increasing rates of diabetic patients across our medical centers and decide whether we should consider hiring additional staff to remain within accreditation standards of appropriate care. First, let's talk through the historical trends that we're seeing. We're gonna be looking at diabetes rates that's gonna be expressed as a percent of total patient base at the medical center level from 2016 to 2021. Looking across all of the medical centers combined, we've seen a steady increase year over year in the diabetes rates of our patient. And today that rate is at 8.6%. Now we forecasted this out and we predict that by 2025, we will be at 10% or one in 10 patients across all clinics will be diabetic. This translates to an additional 14,000 patients per year for the next four years. Now keep in mind, this is the overall average. If we look at individual medical centers, we do have three centers with even higher rates. Center B is the highest at 12 and percent currently and center E has seen a market increase since 2016 and is currently at 11.3%. Now we do also have medical centers with lower diabetes rates, but they each also have an increasing trend. And perhaps we can learn from these centers with the lowest rates and the top patient care, but we may also need to consider hiring additional staff to address this trend. So that is how you might present this data with animation. You build up your visual as you talk through the data so that the audience follows along and doesn't get overwhelmed. So let's review these three approaches on how you can create animated graphs like this in your presentations. Let's start by looking at PowerPoint's native animation functionality. 
Now uh, you may be using other presentation software like a keynote or Google slides. They do have similar animation functionality, but I'm not gonna cover that here today. I'm using PowerPoint. Specifically, I'm on a Mac using version 16. So if you have a different version of the software, just keep in mind that it could look slightly different than what I'm sharing here. So to illustrate the PowerPoint animation technique, I'm actually gonna pop out of presentation mode and show you what it looks like. So if we go to the top menu, you'll see that there is an animations pane in the middle. And there is a number of different animation techniques that you could use here. Now, I would like to strongly caution you to steer clear of anything that's bouncing or flying or too flashy, because it's gonna be way too distracting for your audience. It's, it's really unnecessary and it can be seen as unprofessional. So I would suggest to sticking with like a subtle up here animation. So I'm gonna highlight both the chart and the text box and just click the appear effect. And then I'm gonna navigate over to the animation pane on the right-hand side of the ribbon. And here you'll see that the chart and the text box has been added. So let's take a look at just what that looks like in presentation mode. We'll have the title slide. And then when we click, we'll have the chart and the text. So if I want to build that up, what I can do is pick on the, select the chart in the animation pane. And under chart animations, you'll see it says group graphic all at once. If I click that, I have an option to go by series or a by category. Now this is also in the animation ribbons under what's called effect options. Sequence all at once, by series or by category. So by series in our case is going to be the lines. So you can see in the animation pane, it's added these seven series, one for each of the medical centers, A through F and the overall line. Let's take a look at how that looks. We have the background, and then each of the lines every time we click. Now I can also decide to show this by category. And there is an option also here to include or exclude the background. I'm gonna leave that ticked. Um, by category in our case is going to be the X axis. So the year is moving left to right. And what that looks like is again, we have that background because we tick that box. And then we start with each year moving left to right every time that we click. So you might not want to have to click through all of that, right? You might want to just show all of the actual stuff at once. And so in that case, I can click on category two, hold my shift key and click through to category six. And up here on the animation ribbon is a start drop down where I can click with previous. So now categories one through six are all going to happen on the second click. That timing effect is also down here where you can um, adjust it. So there's two options again to do that. I'm also going to go ahead and take categories eight, nine, and 10, which are, are going to be my forecast years and group those together. So the third, the second, the first click is the background. The second click is all the actuals. And then the third click is the forecast data in the text box. So let's take a look at what that looks like as I go. The title slide, the background, actuals, forecast, and text. So this can get a little hard and cumbersome if you have a large number of data points and text boxes. So that's why I wanted to share with you another brute force approach. And that's taking multiple charts on separate slides. So as you progress through the slides, you kind of build it up. So this could be really helpful for folks who may review the content not in presentation mode, because if you're just looking at the slides outside of presentation mode, you will miss any animation altogether. So to do this approach, we start at the end and work backwards from the final graph. So here's our final graph. I'm going to right click and duplicate it a couple of times. So I have three versions of the chart. And what you do is you start with the first one and just take away anything that you don't want to include. So here I'm gonna right click into the chart and edit the data. 
And now if I only wanted to show the overall line, for example, I will just delete all the other data and you can see that that deletes from the chart. You may have noticed that the Y axis also adjusted in our pre previous version, it went up to 14. So I do want to fix that so that there isn't a jump when I go slide to slide. So it looks more like animation than a separate slide. And I also don't want to have the text associated with the detailed medical center. So I'm just gonna actually white that out. So again, that the text doesn't jump when I go slide to slide. So as I progress, now it looks like animation when it's in fact a separate slide. For the second slide, I'm gonna just focus on the higher medical centers with higher diabetes rates. So I'll delete F, D, and A, and then delete that associated text. And then the third slide, I'm gonna keep as is, that's the final. So let's take a look at what that looks like as we progress through animation. You start with your overall, you can talk through that, then talk about the medical centers that are have higher rates and those with lower rates. Now, if you don't have a lot of time and patience to create a number of charts and you don't want a monkey with adjusting axes, there's another option you could consider. And that's the third option where we use a single chart and just use white text boxes to cover up anything we don't want to share. So again, we start with our final product and we can go up to the insert ribbon and add a text box over the data that we don't want to include and we need to make that white. We can do that by going to the home ribbon and shape fill, make it white. And now it's covering up that data. I'm gonna right click and copy paste this and do the same thing with my words. So now it looks like I just have the background chart. So I can duplicate this slide and then start showing some of the data that I want to present. So if we want to do the overall, I can just adjust this text box. It cuts into the line a little bit. So I'm going to use this little rotating dial to adjust that. I'll copy and paste this to cover up the other items. And then I'm going to adjust the text box just to show the text that I want to present. So I've got four text boxes here, covering up the text and the lines that I don't wanna share. And then I can duplicate this slide. And then I simply just start deleting the text boxes of the things that I do want to share. So we'll start with the centers that have the higher rate and then duplicate this slide and then remove the last text boxes where I've got the final slide. So here, if we look at this in presentation mode, I've got the background, the overall, the higher rates, and then the lower rates. So it looks very similar to the previous two techniques, but it's a different approach. So there you have three ways to animate your charts when presenting in PowerPoint. Animation is a powerful tool to allow your audience to follow along and focus their attention on the message and takeaway that you're communicating. So we have more additional resources for you at the Storytelling with Data blog and our community site, which has additional ways for you to hone your data visualization and storytelling skills, and also connect you with others. I'll put all this and more in the description box below. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you have other PowerPoint topics you'd like to see in future videos, please leave us a note in the pinned comment below. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.